Two years ago, a program crawling the web, looking for public accessible social media platform data, found the Instagram profile of my son. The spider program fetched the data and injected it into a database somewhere located abroad. Just a few days later, my son resentfully said to me, Houston, we have a problem. I see all my Instagram data on another website. I didn't upload any data to this website, nor did I subscribe to their services. How is that possible? What's going on here? Together, we double-checked and we figured out that he changed something in the security settings of his Instagram app, making his profile publicly accessible for everybody. I didn't like that at all, because you could easily reverse engineer a typical day in the life of my son. Now, the whole story triggered a very intense and deep discussion about the internet ecosystem, technical details on how messages are transmitted, the history of the internet. Why do we have an internet at all? Data privacy and search engines and how they influence our daily decisions. I really like this discussion and I learned two things. First, my son knows all the apps from our universe. And in case there are any parallel universes, he knows all the apps from there as well. He has quite a good overview of all the functionalities and he uses all these apps as responsibly as he can. Second, he has rather limited knowledge on the forces governing the internet ecosystem. He is not really aware how this ecosystem influences the decisions he makes and the way he sees and understands our world. Of course, that worried me um, a lot. Now, I can safely say that my son was not well enough educated in those aspects. Now, you might say, oh, Marcel, come on, chill out. I mean, it's important to know how to use all these apps and technologies in an efficient way. But it isn't as important to know how they are engineered. And by the way, Marcel, isn't it your job, your challenge, to teach your kids on all those aspects? I say, yes, you are right, but that's just one part of the story. And the other part goes as follows. The government, our educational system, and we as a society are in charge as well to educate future generations on the ongoing digital revolution. And I want to support this statement by talking about artificial intelligence. Ooh, artificial intelligence. I'm sure everybody here heard about it in one or the other way lately. You might have read that Google has a built a system based on artificial intelligence which beats a top player at the game of Go. Now, that's really impressive because the game of Go has a much higher complexity compared to the game of chess. Systems based on artificial intelligence are at least as good as humans at brain cancer detection. Self-driving cars, self-flying drones, face detection, voice recognition, algorithmic trading, news, book, and music recommendations, 
robots, chatbots, and, and, and. Artificial intelligence is here and now, and you carry it in your pocket. Now, one type of system or one type of technology making possible all this breakthrough is called deep learning or deep neural network. These systems are based on layers. Each layer is composed of small computational units called neurons. Neurons within one layer are connected to neurons within the next preceding layer. Now, assume you have a bunch of images which are unlabeled and the images show different animals and you want the system to classify those images. How does this work? Well, the system reads the image and passes the data to the first layer. Neurons in the first layer respond to very simple patterns and shapes like edges. The activated neurons then pass the data to the next layer, the second one. Neurons in the second layer respond to more complex patterns like arms or legs or ears, eyes. Again, the activated neurons pass the data to the next layer. And this goes on and on and on till the last layer. The last layer knows about the complex concept of how an animal looks like, like a fish, cat or dog. Finally, the output of the system is a bunch of numbers telling you how confident the system is at detecting a cat or an elephant or any other animal. Now, the whole thing works somehow similar to what is going on in our brains when we humans classify images. Different regions in our brain respond to different patterns on different complexities. Deep learning systems are, of course, not limited to process images. You could input, let's say, text from an email and the system tells you what well, this is spam or not. Or you could input voice records and the output of the system might be transcriptions. Or you could input data related to the US um, presidential election and the output might be... Well, let's talk about something else, please. <laughs> um, these systems are even capable kind of uh, dreaming, so they show signs of creativity. Take the image on top, the famous image, and input it to the system, but you don't ask the system to classify the image, but you ask the system to amplify patterns it recognizes on the image, patterns that it has seen and learned before, and you can end up with something like the image on the bottom. These systems are very high accurate in classifying and show signs of creativity. Now, more and more systems coming up, learning by direct interactions with humans. Microsoft did a very interesting experiment lately. They released a chatbot on Twitter, and the bot was supposed to engage millennials with artificial intelligence. Shortly after they released the bot, they had to shut down the machine. What happened? The bot turned racist and started to insulting other people. <laughs> now, what is the lesson learned here? What we see here is that machines can be biased. But this should not come as a surprise, because machines learn from data, and we humans, we generate those data. But we humans are biased. That's how something like discrimination can find a path into those machines. Now here it's obvious that something went completely wrong. 
but take a more subtle case like an assistant for churches in risk assessment on criminals. There are well-documented cases where non-white persons were discriminated by such machines. Now, that means that we have to think about somehow how we incorporate societal values in those machines. But who is going to do that? I mean, who will decide what values will go in? Is it the government or IT cracks or researchers or you and me? The point is that at the moment almost nobody is able to participate in that discussion. And the reason why is, well, we are not educated. But think about that. I mean, we teach our kids on the importance to know that we had graffiti in forms of cave painting 10,000 years ago, but we don't educate our kids on the drivers of the ongoing digital revolution. A digital revolution which is about to change society now, and a revolution which has the potential to change humanity in the future. Nick Bostrom, a recognized expert in the field of artificial intelligence, hypothesizes on the question, what happens when a machine reaches human level of intelligence? And he says that such a machine will go beyond any human cognitive capabilities very quickly. Now, what does this mean for us? There are several scenarios, of course. One scenario is this one. We do nothing and hang around all day long, and the machines will do our work. Not my preferred scenario, because work is too much fun, right? Another scenario, probably more realistic, is that such a machine would even not recognize anymore that humans are intelligent. What would that mean for us? What would that mean for a relationship between humans and machines? Of course, nobody knows. You know, I'm really a big fan of all these technologies and in particular of deep learning. And I think that these machines can help us solving complex and important problems in our world. I think we can use these machines for the good. But to release the potential in the right direction that we really can benefit from it, we have to think about some really hard questions. Questions such as, who is responsible for machine-generated decisions? Should intelligent machines have their own rights? And where and how do we want to engage artificial intelligence? And what societal values should go in? Do we need regulation? I hope you come along with me now that these questions are by far too important to be discussed just among experts. This discussion has to be brought to the public domain. And one key element to do so is education. Education on all the fundamental topics touching our digital lives. Education starting at primary school. So the healthy relationship between humans and machines is triggered by education. By the way, my son and me, we wrote to the website owner and told him to delete all the data he fetched from my son's Instagram profile. And you know what? At that time, my son knew that the website owner has to do that. There was no option 
to, to not to do it. So the key was education. Thank you. <laughs>